this presentation. Uh, today my topic is uh, one of the hot topic in all over the world, MRI staging of bladder cancer. Uh, I mean, uh, the new assessment uh, method of uh, virus. Uh, firstly, in fact, I want to thank you, the organization committee. Really, it's a great pleasure to be here. Okay, let's start. Uh, as you know, the bladder cancer is one of the 10 most frequent cancers. Oh. Uh, oh. Sorry. Sorry for this. Okay. Sorry for this. And the incidence is about 500,000 patients per year. And the assessment of muscle invasion is essential in staging and treatment of bladder cancer because the therapeutic planning uh, and prognosis are strictly related to it, as you know that. And the initial diagnostic workup starts with cystoscopy and follows by TURB. Uh, although the majority of the cases are diagnosed at a non-muscle invasive stage, this number, I mean, uh, the 200,000 uh, deaths per year represents that there are some problems related to bladder cancer. And uh, the staging errors, aggressiveness of bladder cancer, and problems in treatment, uh, which are responsible for this mortality rate. First, let's look through the most important staging error, and as you know, the clinical staging errors vary from 24 to 62 percent. And uh, for NI, uh, NMIBC patients, the uh, repeat TURBT is often recommended because of the chance of upstaging disease. And the need for appropriate staging tool was demonstrated in this relatively old research, research in 2001. It was pointed out that for the patients who were under stage at initial diagnosis, the five-year mortality rate was up to 30% higher compared to those correctly staged. And aggressiveness of bladder cancer is another matter. Up to 70% of patients with NMIBC experience disease relapse between, uh, within five years. In MIBC patients, uh, the overall five-year mortality ranges from 70 to, uh, 50 to 70%. And problems is, uh, I mean, in treatment is also a matter. Uh, in this report, they have stated that bladder cancer survival is strongly dependent on the treatment delivered rather, rather than the intrinsic aggressiveness of the tumor. Despite the advancements in surgical and pharmacological treatment, the primary diagnostic and therapeutic planning need to be improved and implementation of the accuracy of the primary staging of the tumor is of vital importance. In order to optimize the diagnostic pathway and to minimize costs related to bladder cancer uh, management, uh, this new diagnostic technique is being proposed. Uh, and PMRI with the use of virus scoring system seems to compose a possible solution to this issue. Uh, Wireless uh, is a structured reporting scheme for MPMRI, and it was released in, uh, by a European Association of Urology in 2018. And the main goal of Wireless is to evaluate whether there is a muscle invasion before TURB. There are uh, three dominant sequences in virus assessment. Uh, T2, DCE, DWI. And the last one, ADC map, in fact, is not a, a sequence. Uh, in fact, uh, it's a map which derived from DWI. There are five categories for each sequence. 
we assign a score for each sequence according to these criteria. At the end of the evaluation, we assign an overall virus category for deletion. These overall virus categories represent the probability of the muscle invasion. And there are five categories in virus assessment. The first and the second represent low probability of muscle invasion. The fourth and the fifth represent the high probability of muscle invasion. And virus three represents the fact that the presence of muscle invasion is equivocal. And this diagram illustrates findings in all dominant sequences. I know it's, it's a bit confusing, but in fact, the main matter is to assess the interruption of low signal intensity, which represents the muscular layer, layer at bladder wall. Uh, let me show you a few examples uh, from our database. Uh, this is a virus one lesion. There's a lesion less than one centimeter on the left side of the bladder in T2 sequences. And you can easily see that uninterrupted low signal intensity line represents that muscular integrity. And this is a virus two lesion. In fact, the criteria are quite similar with the virus one, but in this case, the lesions are bigger than one centimeter and we can still see the muscular layer integrity. And as you see, and this is a virus three case. Uh, this is not the tumor, this is the hematoma. The tumor is on the left side of the bladder wall. And uh, it's a bit difficult to have a conclusion. I mean, no clear disruption of low signal intensity of muscular layer. Uh, I see, it's, it's, it's really uh, not too easy to say that there's a muscular invasion. But uh, thanks to the virus uh, assessment uh, strategy, in such cases, I mean the T2 category three lesions, if the DC or DWI score is four, in another word, uh, if we see a muscle invasion findings in the other sequences, so the overall virus score goes to four. And this is, uh, in this case, we clearly see the interruption of low signal intensity line at the level of the tumor. Uh, it's suggesting the tumor extension into muscular layer. And this is, is a kind of easy case uh, to have a conclusion. And this is five. Uh, why this five? Uh, it's so obvious that uh, to see the lesion, I mean, the extravascular extension of the tumor uh, it's so obvious in those virus five uh, patients. And another uh, important question, how good is virus at predicting muscle invasion? Uh, after virus had been proposed in 2018, several researches were published. On the slide, you can see the recently published meta-analysis published meta uh, based on 20 studies. The pool of sensitivity is between 7 to 8 and 8 to 7, and the specificity is between 86 and 94 for the cutoffs, uh, cutoff values, virus uh, 3 and virus uh, 4. What about the inter-observer agreement? Uh, sorry. Uh, in this publication, it has been observed that inter-observer agreement is moderate to substantial among radiologists of different levels of expertise. And the use of MRI might fit in multiple settings, and the virus applicability is best suited before TURBT and intravesical BCG administration. And another uh, important point, if the patient comes to you after TURB, and if the patient doesn't have any MRI, it's suggested to perform MRI at least two weeks after TURB and BCG administration in order to avoid overstaging caused by post-treatment architectural changes. And you have to wait at least two days after cystoscopy or removal of a Foley catheter to lower uh, the risk of artifacts. Patients with high-risk NMIBC, uh, virus scoring might be 
of use for disease risk stratification and as an indication to undergo secondary resection of the tumor or to avoid it. In an MIBC surveillance, MRI might represent a reliable, non-invasive alternative to follow up with cystoscopy with reduction of disease-related costs. Uh, and in patients with MIBC, the virus squaring might be useful to stage tumors like to benefit from neoadjuvant therapy to identify tumors suited for bladder sparing surgery and chemo radiation and to plan a surgical feasible therapeutic TURBT. Uh, in patients with MIBC, MRI application during chemo radiotherapy, chemotherapy might stratify patients according to earlier prediction of treatment failure, with the main goal of reducing morbidity and costs. Uh, there could be some other applications for MPMRI in the future. Several studies have demonstrated how reliable MRI functional sequences are in determining and predicting tumor aggressiveness. Uh, ADC values has been proposed as a biomarker, uh, a potential biomarker, and these cutoff, ADC cutoff values could be used to differentiate higher grade tumors from less aggressive phenotypes. And uh, in a recent studies, they proposed diffusion weighted MRI as a biomarker to predict chemo radiation sensitivity in MIBC patients. To conclude, we can say that MPMRI offers an opportunity to reduce staging errors. Uh, virus sensitivity and specificity is high in differentiating NMIBC from MIBC. Given its lack of radiation, and PMRI offers investigation of individuals at risk of bladder cancer and imaging of the same patients prior to, during, and following treatment. MRI application during chemotherapy might stratify patients according to earlier prediction of treatment failure. And the virus score might become a tool uh, for prediction of both tumor aggressiveness and response to therapy. Thank you. Any questions with this future perspective? And if not, may I ask you one? So, if I understand well, Barish, we do a cystoscopy to confirm the tumor, and then the next thing, if you want to use it, is to schedule an MRI. Yes. You need to wait two days? Uh, for cystoscopy, yes, two yes. days. Now, if I'm a little bit impatient and already did my surgery, my bladder tumor resection, is there still value for an MP MRI? And, and at what interval should I wait to see before I can have use to it? After cystoscopy? No, after resection. After resection, you have to wait at least two weeks. Okay. Good. For, for MPMRI, you yes. have to wait for two weeks at least. It's written in a virus structure report. Uh, but in fact, the at least means uh, at least. <laughs> I mean, uh, sometimes that inflammation uh, may have a huge effect. So uh, if possible, we don't know the exact time. Uh, we know the limitation, I mean, the uh, low limitation, but we don't know the upper limitation, but we have to wait at least two weeks. Perfect. So I think we give him again a warm applause because he gave a fantastic lecture for us urologists. <laughs>